So let's say you've made a cool project, and it takes some time to load, and you decide that you don't want your players to see that. What do you do? You make a loading screen. So first, let's make a project. So I'm going to drag out a text object, and I'm going to make an emoji, which is to the left of the spacebar. If you don't have an emoji keyboard, you have to enable it in your iPad settings. And I'm going to pick the snail. Obviously, you can pick whatever you want. And I'm going to add a new rule. When the play button is tapped, I'm going to draw a spiral, which is just one of your pre-made abilities right there. And let's play it. Beautiful. Okay, so this is my project. It's a masterpiece. It's profound. But let's imagine for a moment that I didn't want my users to see this background being drawn. So this is where I would have a loading screen. So the way we're going to make a loading screen is first we're going to place the loading screen background in front of our project. Then we're going to place a text in front of that indicating that the project is loading. And then we're going to make a button that shows up once the project is done loading. And when you press that, the loading screen will disappear and you will see your project ready to be played. So one important thing to note here is you can't use leave a trail to draw your loading screen. The screen has to be in front of your project and leave a trail can't be in front of things so we're gonna have to use objects but we'll get into that a little more later. So first let's grab our background. So let's go back to edit. Let's exit out of this rule. Um, I'm gonna use the plus button here. I'm gonna tap on the plus button here I'm going to drag out a text object and I'm going to go to emoji and I want a black background so I'm going to find the computer key so I'm going to find the computer emoji which is right here. If you have an older version of iOS you might not see this emoji and you can just use this instead. Or if you want a really pure black background or a background you can change the color of you might want to use this black square you might have seen in other projects the way to get that is just go to that project, select that square, copy it, go back to your project, and then paste it in here. But for now we're going to use this, it'll work fine. So press done. And I'm going to put it right at like 650 by 200. And I'm going to add a new rule. When the play button is tapped, so first I want this to be bigger than the screen, so it's the only thing I see, and then I want it to be in front of everything. So. So go to looks and sounds and drag out a set size block and let's make it 4000%. This is huge. And then let's go down to control flow and drag out a weight block. And let's wait 10 milliseconds. And then let's bring to front, which is in looks and sounds again. And let's see what that looks like. Cool. Let's go back. So why did I wait 10 milliseconds? Well, the way bring to front works is that whatever is brought to front last is in the very front. So let's say you brought this black screen up in the beginning of the project when the, when the play button is tapped. And then in your game, you have a character being brought to front like 10 seconds in. That's going to be in front of this screen. So you have to make sure that you know where all your objects are in terms of bring to front, send to back. So now let's exit out of here and let's add another object. So add a text object and let's call it loading. Now add a new rule. When the play button is tapped, let's go to looks and sounds and let's drag out a set text because we're going to change the color of this. Now go to the keyboard and remove this new text and let's type in loading. Press done. And let's make the color white. Press done. And now let's bring to front. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, we don't see it. Do you know why? Because this was brought to front before this was. This waited 10 seconds and then was brought to front, so it ends up in front of loading. So actually loading was in front for like a moment, but then it was covered by the screen. So what we want to do is go to control flow, drag out a wait block, and wait 15 seconds. So now it'll happen after. Let's see if that works. Cool. Okay. So let's make this bigger though. So it looks and sounds, drag out a set size and put it anywhere before bring to front and let's make it like 300%. Let's center it a bit. Cool. 
So now once the project is done loading, we want this text to disappear and for the word start to show up. So we know that the project is done loading when the snail finishes drawing a spiral, right? So let's go to the snail's rule where it draws that spiral. After it draws a spiral, we're going to put a special block here. So go down to values and drag out set value. And now let's tap on this gray arrow next to snail. So we're in the iPad's values and let's add a new value. And let's call it done loading. Press done. And let's drag it in here and let's set it to one. So what this means is while the spiral is being drawn before this block happens, the value done loading is gonna equal zero because all values equal zero at first. But once this is done, this value will equal one. And the loading screen can then check to see what this value equals, if it's one or zero, and decide what to do from there. And we're gonna have, we're gonna make a rule that says if this becomes one and the loading screen sees that, the loading screen will disappear. So let's write that. So let's exit out of here and let's go to this loading text. And let's add a new rule. And go to more for the whens and go all the way down to the bottom and find equals. Now go to values for the first bubble. We're going to look for that done loading value. So tap on the gray arrow next to loading until you find done loading right here in the iPads values and tap it or drag it in here, either one. And then pick one for the second bubble. So when done loading equals one, we want this text that says loading to disappear. And to do that, we're going to go to looks and sounds, drag out set invisibility, and set it to 100 because 100% 100 invisible means you can't see it. Let's press check and let's see what happens. So right now behind the screen, the snail is drawing a spiral. Once it's done, this should happen. Boom. Cool. So it's working. Now let's go back to edit and let's get out of here and let's add a new object. So go to the plus button and drag out a new text object and let's call it start. So this is going to appear when the project is done loading. So add a new rule. When the play button is tapped, so first let's make start like a really big thing. So let's, let's change the color first. So set text and pick the keyboard and erase all this and write start and then pick your color. So I don't know, I want mine to be light green. Why not? And let's make it big. Drag out a set size and put it, I don't know, 400% again. So right now, it's behind that black screen. And we want to keep it there until the project is done loading. So let's exit out of here and make a new rule. Add a new rule. So here, let's go down to equals for the wins. And like before, we're going to find done loading. So go to values, tap on the gray arrow next to start, and look for done loading, and pick it for the first bubble. Then for the second bubble, let's pick one. And press check. And what we want to do is right now in the beginning of the project, while it's loading, this start object is behind the black screen. So once done loading equals one, we want to bring it in front of the black screen. So we go to looks and sounds and drag out a bring to front block. Cool. Let's see if that works. Snail is drawing. Da -da 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 -da. Nice. Okay. So now what we want is that when I tap on start, I want all this to disappear. So let's do that. Go to edit and add a new rule to start and find when character is tapped. And when it's tapped, we want it to disappear. So go to looks and sounds and drag out set invisibility and make it 100. And let's get out of here. And let's also make this disappear this black screen, so add a new rule for the black screen, and pick when blank is tapped, and then pick start. So when we press the start button, this black loading screen will disappear. So press check, go to looks and sounds, and drag out set invisibility, and set it to 100. And let's see if that worked. Okay, we're loading, and then we're done loading, and then when we press start, we've got the project. 
So cool, that's the basic framework for a loading screen. But let's go back because I bet we can make this a little cooler because right now that loading screen looked a little frozen. We didn't really have any visual indication that something was happening. So let's go back to edit and let's get out of here and let's go back to the loading object and let's add a new rule. So while the project is loading, let's have the loading text fade in and out. And that's an animation that might make us think that something's happening behind the scenes. So if you remember the fade out video, then you might know how to write this code, but if you don't, I'll show you. So first for the when, let's go down to equals again and go to values, gray arrow next to loading and find done loading. And this time let's equal it to zero. So the idea is that before done loading is equal to one. While it's equal zero, while this nail is drawing that spiral, let's have the following happen. We're gonna fade out and then fade in. And we're gonna repeat that so long as this equals zero. So first go to control flow and go to repeat and drag it out and pick 50. And then go to looks and sounds and drag out set invisibility and put it inside this repeat block. And let's pick the plus button and then go to values and tap on the left arrow until you're in the current object's values, it might be called text3, and pick its invisibility as a percent. This is a reference to the loading words invisibility. And to it, we're going to add 2. So tap on this other bubble and press 2. So this is actually the loading words invisibility. And 50 times we're going to add 2 to it. So it will eventually equal 100. And then 50 times we're going to subtract 2 so that it comes back to 0. So what it'll look like is it's fading in and out. So let's add that second part. Drag out another repeat from control flow and pick 50. And then drag set invisibility in here and pick minus right there. And then go to values and pick invisibility as a percent. And then subtract from that 2. Alright, let's see if it worked. Cool. And done. Okay. Cool. Um, maybe even one more little flourish. Let's add one more object, maybe like a little spinning wheel under it. So go to your object menu, and drag out a text object, and go to emoji, and I'm going to go all the way to the right and find this little black ball. Press done. And I'm going to put it right under the loading screen. So I'm going to put it like right here maybe. Add a new rule. When the play button is tapped, I want it to be like almost invisible, and then I'm going to bring it to the front. So go to looks and sounds, pull out set invisibility, and let's make it 80. Then we got to go to control flow and wait 15 milliseconds, so it's brought to front after the black screen. Press check. And then we're bringing it to front. And then let's go to repeat forever, drag that out and then go to movement and we're going to turn it. So drag out the turn block and let's turn it 10 degrees. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's cool. But now we know that we didn't make a rule to make this disappear once it's done loading, so you still see it there. So remember, if you're going to have an animation here, you have to add a rule. So let's add a new rule that says when done loading, set invisible. So go down to equals for your when, pick values, go to your iPad's values, pick done loading, and say when done loading equals one, press check, set invisible. So go to looks and sounds, drag out an invisibility block, and press 100. And now that should, so it's turning right now because it's loading, but then when it's done loading, which is soon, it'll disappear. Great. Okay, so then Finally, let's talk about loading screen best practices for a second. In my opinion, the best loading screens are going to distract you while your game is loading. So if you're making a game that takes a while to load, if all you see is this fading in and out loading word, if that's going to happen for like a minute, you're going to get bored of that. But another idea you could have is to have like a little mini game right here. So that while it's loading, you can play a tiny little version of Flappy Bird or Geometry Dash or maybe watch a little movie or what have you. So that's basically it for loading. Um, if you want, I can teach you how to make a bar 
a progress bar. Maybe I'll make that a part two of this video. So I'm really excited to see the awesome loading screens everyone makes, and I'm really excited to see the cool games you make that need a loading screen. So can't wait to see all your projects, and I'll see you next time. Bye.